goodies. Well, here we are in the beehive. I am on fire. Yeah, I have been trying to figure out how to proceed uh, and decided that no plan is the best plan, isn't it? And with that said, I am starting to be more flexible with myself also. And I encourage that for you. So I have a few things to share today. Number one being that I have some Yazzie bags on their way. Uh, Yazzie bags has a new bag for cro that would work for cross stitchers even. So I'm very excited to see that. But since I have been a fan of the Yazzie bag, I figured I would show you what I have done and what I need to get done. Um, because they, uh, some of my bags are on the UFO list. Yes. So initially, oh, and I told, I told, uh, this was the thing. Sue Spargo, whenever she would do a block of the month, she would also create a stitch a stitchery for a bag. I asked her stop doing that because it stops me from getting my block of the month done because I have to do the bag first. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So the very first Yazzie bag I got was this big mother. Isn't she wonderful? And Sue designed this little quilt for the top of the bag and then put some of her ribbon that you get in her shop. Now I have to tell you, you have to be creative in attaching these because some of the bags have a pocket on the inside. But I just hand stitched it down. I'm trying to find my zipper here. It, the interesting part of a Yazzie bag is that it was originally designed for travel, not for crafters. But the crafters have been totally overtaking it because it has so many pockets. Look at my beautiful thread. Look at my beautiful thread. I can't stop looking at it myself. And there's pockets for rulers, pockets, I mean it would work to travel, but it works to travel your stitching too. Um, I'm very proud of this. I'm very proud of this bag uh, and this project because <laughs> it was one of my projects I got done. <laughs> so how have you been? How have you been? Have you gotten any stitching going? Anything new? Yeah, so I went to a um, Sue Spargo retreat workshop through um, Madeline Island School of the Arts in Arizona. And I got, I was green with envy. I'm sure it was there that I saw it. But someone had brought their Yazzie bag mini iron bag. See, it's for the mini iron. Look how cute that's shaped. And it holds the mini iron, which I use, okay. and also has a pocket for flatter or starch, the miniature bottle, so starch. But their mini iron bag was all embellished. In fact, I know it was, um, I know it was in Arizona because I went immediately down to the quilt bag. Yeah, the quilt basket in Tucson, and asked. I bought the the mini iron bit, and I had them cut me some wool, and I started this. Do you remember this? For those who've been around here for a long time, because I wanted one just like my fellow student, and then you stitch it and attach it to the bag. Isn't that adorable? But what was what stumps me, and this goes for um, any kind of wool stitching where you want to increase the embellishment factor on it, 
is the decision making of what stitch to use. So what I decided on this particular one is to take some of the decision making out of the equation by doing the same stitch on the same color. So whatever stitch I did here, which is that beautiful trellis stitch, on the next blue one I am doing it there. And then whatever stitch I'm doing here will be the stitch that I did there. So that's a bullion stitch. And so I'm going to keep embellishing these circles and then attach it to my iron so the next time I show up in class and I sit down and someone sits down at the table to share it with me they'll they'll for a moment until I open my mouth they'll say oh she must be really good she must be a great stitcher and then you know then the truth will come out but I wanted to have that. And then the last thing that I had done was this little wallet by Yazzie. Yeah, Yazzie.com. Um, and this was a Sue Spargo um, pattern that she did for Yazzie bags. And um, it's a little wallet, it's very convenient because you sew the little wool in there to keep your needles and then you can use the tags that Sue sells or you can make your own, whichever you want and um, I have a threader, I have my needles everything you need for a quick trip somewhere to stitch it looks like that isn't it cute? Like a little wallet. This would fit in your purse. Yeah. So I could see, I could conceivably put a few, take some thread off of the spool, tuck it in the little pocket with this, and put this in here. And I have a project on the go. So when I um, decided that this particular bag, which is a very popular size uh, project bag, very cute, walking down the street. Uh, this is where I decided to give myself a little grace to be a little bit flexible. And I know that in the middle of the chaos and the move and the before the move even started, I had to start thinking. I was doing the Squash Squad, which was a free uh, project done by Sue Spargo on Instagram. And I was really going gung-ho at the beginning, but then I got distracted with everything in my life and naturally fell off. But that it, it was still calling me, but I said, I I can reinvent it. I can do it differently. And so I decided to embellish the front of this bag with the block. Isn't that cute? And the thing you have to know, let me just tell you my little tricks that I do, is I needed to fuse this on there to hold it so I could stitch it. But to get the iron, you see there's a plastic pocket right on the other side that's going to get melted by the hot iron. So what I did was I put soft fuse on the back of my square. Then I put an ironing pad in between here so that I could iron the top without melting my plastic pocket so that it would stick here. And why do I want it to stick here? Because I don't want to think about it when I'm stitching it down. And what I'm going to be doing is a buttonhole stitch all the way around this uh, particular project. I'm going to first hide my first knot 
and and then you just have to grab the very top layer and not like poke through because you have a pocket on the other side and and it you know it doesn't need to be like really strong because it's already fused and it's just need to catch that top layer of the bag so that's what I'm going to be doing while we're talking but first I before I get started with the stitching I have other things to share with you I finished this this is for a friend oh I got a little fuzz on there I can't adult today I just can't I can't adult today I got this little kit from um, Hobby Lobby, I think it was. I was walking there and it was a little embroidery kit. It included the floss, the needle, and it was already pre-printed. And they were smart like me. <laughs> Hobby Lobby was smart like me in terms of that they had fusible already on the back of this so that you could carry your thread a little bit without it showing through. And then the cardboard that came in the package I cut out and glued to the back. And I'm going to put a little message there for my friend. But because there's just some days you just can't adult. It seems like lately there's a lot of days I can't adult. So since I have um, some more Yazzie bags coming, I was thinking about things that I could do to embellish the fronts of them. That I didn't just want all wool on the front of my Yazzie projects. Get some things I could do something else with. And when I was going through my projects, my dreams, my some days. What else could we call those? You know, those things that we got really inspired by and then something interrupted that train of thought and um, we went off running in a different direction. I have a lot of those. And one of the one of the places that I love to land my brain and my needle at is with my friend Gail Pan. She's from Down Under, but her book, oh my gosh, this is this is a fabulous book. And we gave this book away I think a couple of years ago. Yeah. There's so many fun things, so many fun things in here, and they're not all complicated. But she has a beautiful, beautiful, whimsical design sense, and I have a certain way of prepping those projects. And so I had several of them prepped, and I thought, oh, I need to... I need to start embroidering because after I did that, um, after I did this little thing, I can't adult today. I just love that. I, I it's like my my hands remembered they like to embroider. Yeah, it's you get you get distracted and then you start like cross stitching or you start wool stitching, or applique, hand quilting, and, and, and then you get further and further away from one of those, and you forget about how much you love them, and all it takes is a little bit of nudge, and you are back in it, baby. You are back in it. And I had several of these already prepared embroidery um, canvases ready to stitch. And so here's one of them. Isn't that adorable? That is so adorable. And so I'm going to start stitching on this. The way I do this, and I know that there's a video where I did a tutorial, is I 
um, first of all, I pick my fabric that I'm going to have as my base. And then I fuse onto the back Pellon SF101. It is a lightweight cotton fusible that only has fusible on one side. And the reason I do that is, number one, you can carry your threads without it showing through to the front. That's number one. Uh, number two is that you don't get a lot of fraying on the edge. That's number two. And number three is you don't even need a hoop because it, it gives a, a firmer stability, although it needles without any problem at all. Um, you just, if your needle's not going through, that means you need a new needle, girlfriend. Yeah, it, you've used it till it turns into a nail, then you need a new needle. Yeah. But the way I prep this is I get my Miso light table out, which is my favorite light table. It's been with me for, gosh, um, um, almost over 25 years, I swear, I've had that table. And, uh, and I love it because it's simple, it's not complicated, it's sturdy, it has, it, and I cannot, uh, as I have aged, I physically don't like to stand up to a window and trace. So I use my miso table on my ironing board because the ironing board is high and so I have no back problems tracing. And I trace it first on the cotton before I f put the fusible. Before I put the fusible on, I've traced, I'm tracing it on, on my background. And um, I use a Micron, the smallest Micron brown pen, which is what Crabapple Hill uh, traces all of their embroidery projects with. And then once I have it all traced, then I put the SF 101, the Pellon product, which I get by the bolt at, um, I just keep a bolt of it here because I use so much of it, um, on the back. And then it's all ready. Like this has been like this probably two years now. I probably did these two years ago. And so, um, and then I have this one, which is really cute. Look at that one. That Gail Pan, she is just she is so talented. I tell you, she is so talented. And then this one is so sweet. Just so. Just so. So I'm hoping, <laughs> here, just so, so I'm hoping um, that when my Yazzie bags come that I can um, that one of these uh, embroidery stitcheries will look pretty on the front of the bag. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So let me show you this. Oh, I have to get that one done too. Uh, this uh, this particular one that was so cute was a free pattern. So you have to go, if it's still there, oh, it should be still there because this is from 2020. Huh. It is um, on Gail Pan Designs. So you can go onto her site and oh, and she did it all in a blue, blue um, thread. You see that? I just love, I just love her stuff. I just love her stuff. So, yeah, and this book is the other designs. Oh, some of them are. I don't know. I've been very attracted. I mean, look at this one. This one is the one I already have traced, you know, with all the 
fun things, but look at what she did with it. Little wall hanging with thread and buttons and rickrack and oh my gosh, that is so cute. Charms, old needles, and then she framed it. Mm. So good, so good. But I think I'm going to start this one as my next embroidery. But I don't think I'm going to do it all in blue. I, I kind of want to do it in gold and black, I think. You know, so I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of stitching here while we continue to talk. I'm just doing, because I'm doing the outside edge of this, uh, my squash squad block onto this Yazzie bag, I'm just going to do a buttonhole stitch to, even though it's fused down there, I'm going to do a buttonhole stitch around the edge. Yeah. So believe it or not, we're supposed to get snow. Uh, yeah, and it's supposed to be in the Portland area, snow at the 500 um, foot level, and our house is at a thousand. So I suspect we might get a little, we might get a little snow. The biz biggest obstacle to us is our driveway. Our driveway is like a little hippopotamus hump. Uh, you know, it's uh, short, kind of like me, short and steep. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, this is going to be perfect on here. I'm so excited. I am so excited to have used this beautiful block I stitched on something. And that's the thing, is that, you know, we don't have to um, we're our own boss. That's all I'm saying. We're our own boss. So if you can see, I am not going through the whole top layer of the bag. I'm just catching the top layer uh, and not going through to the inside. Oh, this is so cute. Sometimes I just amaze myself. I know. I, I almost could hear G rolling his eyes next door. <laughs> Since he edits the videos, there's no hiding anything I say from him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been thinking for several years I need to embellish the top of this bag and I would get distracted by the next bag and I thought, oh man, I got more Yazzie bag coming. I better, I better um, finish embellishing this one. Robin uh, embellished the top of her bag. I remember, I think it was a gecko that she put on it. She embellished a gecko on it. And I think the colors of this block are just perfect for this bag. Yeah, my cross stitch uh, Yazzie bag that's coming is um, is red. I believe it's red. So I'll have to see what I decide to do on the top of that. So you see, I'm putting my hand inside the pocket right there to just kind of give myself a, a base to stitch on. But I'm not going through, not going all the way through. And this is the, this is part of the, 
little challenge of when you embellish a Yazzie bag, you have to be a little bit creative and a little bit flexible. That's the thing about um, this move is, you know what really, I mean, G's back is what he's complained about, but you know what I'm complaining about is my hands. My hands are so sore. It's like I, 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 um, ripping open boxes, looking for floss, um, made me, uh, did a little bit of challenge to the joints. And so my hands are a little bit sore. I think the best way to do this, I think I can, because I'm right-handed, I think the best way to do this is to nod off at this point and start coming down the other way. So I'm just going to knot off and hide my knot underneath. Okay. Okay. I love this little pin cushion that I got from the Stitch and Post. It's out of ceramic. Uh, I don't know if you're pottery. It's like pottery. It's a little fox, and he's got his little belly. Is the they had all kinds of little animals. Um, that this is the artist's name. Well, it has a little emblem on the back, but um, they carry them at the Stitch and Post, and oh, they're so cute. I better turn my phone off because it starting to ding. Okay, there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to start the other way. Let's see, where am I? Okay. Here we go. You know, I told you that I um, I tried the Instacart thing, which was quite amazing, and I can tell that you'd save a lot of money uh, because you're only <laughs> you're only buying what's on your list. But let me tell you, it seems like in this pandemic that the um, <laughs> grocery shopping has become entertainment. <laughs> you know, I have to go out to the grocery store where, you know, before it was like it was a chore. Now it's like, geez, you want to just get out of the house, but, you know. We have two of the variants in our state now, as some of you others probably do, but so you want to you want to be extra careful. So um, what are you guys stitching on these days? Are you, are you trying to, you know, I'm trying to make, 2021, the year of the uh, UFO finish. This here, this already makes me feel like I'm on the road because I want to shop and 
Um, but I need to get some stuff done before I start shopping again. You know, I just, it's, but boy, I still can't get over that Stacy's little gnomes. They are so dang cute. See, I'm just going to go on around with the buttonhole stitch. And you know, the buttonhole stitch, as I said before, you're just trying to make it the same distance apart. Yeah, and I'm not coming through, so that's good. I saw on Instagram, <laughs> I saw on Instagram Linda Hall, who is a, des a wool designer, uh, put her house on the market in Florida and she's moving <laughs> and she posted the um, she posted the uh, real estate ad so you could go look at her house oh my gosh because she's not just moving she's not just moving her house she's moving her business oh my gosh and I don't envy her <laughs> don't envy her at all so it's going to be fun to see how she decorates her new house the thing about you uh, I, I really want to keep my hand on that inside to make sure because I have in the past <laughs> accidentally gone through and punctured my plastic, and I don't want that to happen. That was in the early days of, how do I stitch this? Gosh, that sure is cute. That's going to be so cute. So are you, are you of the camp where you're going to... Um, try to get things done. I know I've heard a lot of you say that. Or are you of the camp that, hey, 2020 was totally a suffering year and I deserve shopping? Or maybe a combination of both, huh? Maybe a combination of both. So I'm just using, a, just to get this down, I'm using a Valdani 12 P11. It's kind of a, it's a variegated uh, gray black. Uh, it's one of my favorites. So I'm getting towards the end of that a book I was reading called um, A Woman of No Consequence. Awesome book. Awesome book. Makes you realize there's so many heroes out there that we never hear their song. You know, um, so at this bottom edge, I'm not going to be able to get my hand inside. So I'm going to try to do it very gingerly and by needle feel. You know what needle feel is? It's where you can feel where your needle is poking something it shouldn't be poking. <laughs> And so I'm just kind of lifting up that bottom edge and making sure that I am catching my bottom of my thing. And nope, I'm not going through, so that's good. Okay, looks like I need to knot off and start one more thread and I'll be done. Oh, this is so cute. What a fabulous idea. No one's the boss of you. You can reinvent a project. I don't know how many times I've made a quilt and I've said, oh, I can't, there's no way I can do 12 blocks. It's not going to fit anywhere. I'm going to make it a 9-block quilt. Or, oh, I can't stand this border. I'm going to, um, change the border. So, okay. Almost done. Almost done. Ooh, 
The thing I loved about this particular bag is it was small enough. Uh, it's small enough that, you know, it's so easy to take along, but it's big enough that it fit uh, Sue Spargo's creative stitching book inside of it. So that, because I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I am, I always have to recheck the book. I don't know what it is about my brain, but I find that I need to recheck the book. Okay, so I'm going to come up, hide the knot. Always hide the knot. Bringing this around. Okay. I found out something today really weird. I mean, this has nothing to do with anything other than the fact that <laughs> I found it very, quite interesting. So, um, G was heating up lunch for us, and we were having, um, I had made in the Instapot some sweet potatoes. No seasoning or anything, I just cooked them up. And and then we had made up some roasted Brussels sprouts for dinner the other night. And um, so he was making a bowl up for us, and he chopped up the sweet potatoes and the Brussels sprouts together. And um, I said, well, you forgot to take the skin off of the sweet potatoes. And he said, you can't eat the skin of the sweet potatoes? And I said, I've never eaten the sweet potato skins. And he said, is that a Korean wives' tale? Or the, you really can't eat the skin of sweet potatoes? <laughs> I mean, this is the kind of conversations that are going on in this house. So I googled it, and it says, you've been missing out on the nutrients of sweet potatoes if you've been taking the peels off of them. I never knew. I mean, since I was a kid, we peeled the peel off the sweet potatoes. <laughs> so, I ate them. <laughs> I feel healthier already. <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny. Okay, I got to the end, and now. I'm going to knot it off. Oh my gosh, this is... Perfecto! I can put this book back in here. Zip my bag up. Now, you've got to admit, that is just freaking cute. My little Yazzie bag with my Squash Squad block on it. That is just perfect. That is just perfect. So, I am so excited about it. So, what, what am I doing next? Okay, I'm telling you. My next thing, oh, there's my scissor cover, is I'm going to start embroidering. I forgot how much I love embroidering. Yeah. So I'm going to mix up some embroidering in between my wool stitching, in between my quilting, in between everything else that I do. But I figure the next day or so it's going to be cold and snowy and it's perfect stitching weather. It's perfect stitching weather. So thank you for stopping by and I hope you'll stay tuned next time. I hope you're staying healthy. I am so excited about all that we're going to be doing this year. 2021 is going to be the epic of the finish. So join me and take care.